It's Tano Passanio with the Saints, and you're plugged in with Jay. Yo, what's good? It's your homeboy T Pain. Right now, at this very exact moment, you plugged in with Jay. Turn up, turn up, turn up. My boy, Jay Perry. You're listening to my boy, Jay the Plug. My boy, Jay the Plug. And you're listening to my boy, Jay the Plug. You're listening to my boy, Jay the Plug. You're listening to my boy, Jay the Plug. Jay the Plug. You got as many winners from anyone. You're listening to my boy, Jay the Plug. Get plugged up, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to Plugged In With Jay. I, of course, am your host, Jay. Jason, Jay the Plug, but one of the biggest fans of the Houdat Nation here with a very special guest. He just had to kind of help me with his last name a little bit. Tano Passignon. How you doing, big fella? Hey, I'm good, Jason. I appreciate you having me on. Man, it's my pleasure, man. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on, bud. I'm I'm looking forward to getting uh, getting started and, and letting the people know more about you, even though, you know, you, you've, you're you pretty big in the NFL, man. You've already won a Super Bowl. I mean, you, you've... You're doing good. We're happy to have you with the Saints, man. Ready to get one of these right here. One I know. of these right there with you. Hey, right. we got to get one this year. <laughs> so, <clears throat> speaking of which, being in the NFL, you were drafted in the second round to the Chiefs 2017 NFL draft. I always ask this question to my guests who played in the NFL, have been drafted. Do you remember the feeling when you got that call? And we saw, let me see, I saw the roulette wheel cake. In the video, did that have any kind of special significance, anything like that? Uh, Nah, nah, not really. Um, A bunch of my my best friends from home, um, they got it for me. Um, It might have actually been their moms who who chipped in on that. Um, Okay. Yeah, it was one big family for us there. But, yeah, no, uh, that time, that moment, it was awesome, dude. Uh, Just because – I didn't really know if I was going to get drafted or not um, up until – uh, my senior year, I kind of got the inkling and, uh, you know, talks about it from scouts and stuff, but you really never know. And um, I was even more surprised that it was the Chiefs. Um, the Chiefs didn't talk to me throughout any of the process um, through like nothing that I went through, like the senior bowl, the combine, um, like team visits. I never went to go visit them. Um, so it was awesome uh, here at getting that phone call. Um, from the uh, GM that we had then, oh, why am I forgetting his name? I just had it, dude, dang. Um, but then Andy Reid getting on the phone, that was awesome just cause uh, I'm, uh, I'm from Philly, right outside of Philly. So, you know, Andy Reid was probably the first like uh, vision I really had of football, the Eagles, T.O., McNabb, all them. Yeah. So with being from outside of Philly, was that your team growing up? I was always curious if, if whenever you get drafted, if there was a team that you were really hoping was going to give you a call? Yeah, I mean, that was definitely my team growing up. Um, I don't know if I, that the Eagles uh, then was really the team I wanted to get the call from. Uh, <laughs> but, hey, at that point, it was any any call would uh, would make my day. And getting that call from the Chiefs really did. Yeah, absolutely. So they didn't – did you have any visits with them? No, I got I had nothing with them. Um, no talks. I was, I talked a lot. Um, I actually talked to the Saints D line coach here. I worked out for him, um, worked out for the lions, worked out for the Steelers. I want to say, um, had a visit with the Steelers, had a visit with, um, a whole bunch of teams. It was kind of like a little tour, um, uh, Cowboys. There's a whole bunch of teams and then chiefs, chiefs can give, give me that call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great team to be on, man. Yeah. Uh, Something I, I, you know, as you can see it, before we got started, I showed you all my Saints stuff, which this is barely even half. It barely even, I mean, barely even the tip of the iceberg, barely an ice cube chipped. I got way more over there, all over the place. Been a Saints fan forever. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So, oh, yeah. That. Um, Saints are known to be one of the teams with the most personality, especially on defense. Um, I've got a, a, you see the jersey behind me with Darren Waller. He's a friend of mine and he was over here one day and after, right after we got done with the interview I did with him, he was telling me how obnoxious y'all's handshakes were after every time y'all did something on defense. I love it, man. I love it. <laughs> so uh, the defense is very, um, got, got a lot of personality. What is the locker room atmosphere like for that defense? Um, 
Well, I just don't I don't I don't want to forget about the handshakes. That's part of our defensive playbook, man. Remember okay. all the <laughs> it's crazy. It's wild. Uh, <laughs> I screwed one up during the season two, and I'm like, never again. I gotta remember this down pack. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that uh that locker room, man, it is it it it's something I, it's hard to even put into words, dude. Um, like, like, you know, like I've been with the Chiefs, been on a winning team, but like you can't replicate what we have in that locker room, what we have in that de- on that defensive side of the ball. And um, that's something I saw when I played against the Saints and now playing with playing with the Saints. It's just uh, it's amazing to be just a part of that, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. I know y'all have the, the, I mean, man, the celebrations after y'all win a game is incredible, man. It's, 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 it is, it goes down in the annals for sure. Like I love watching those. Is there a player that you clicked with immediately whenever you started playing with the saints, anybody who kind of took you under their wing? Uh, Cam Jordan took, took me under his wing immediately. Yeah. Dude, he, uh, I could talk about him for days. He's the best bet I've ever had. Um, but uh, like me and Marcus Davenport, honestly, we're, we're pretty similar. Um, one of my, old teammates from college, um, Ethan Green, and she's a tackle we have, um, offensive tackle. And he was just telling me how much me and Marcus were alike, like our, like how much we like anime, how much right. uh, we like video games, like uh, playing the Switch and stuff, Nintendo kind of oriented stuff. Um, and just kind of like our personalities, dude. We're kind of pretty not outspoken dudes, but we when we get on the field, it's like, it's all, it's, it's all like, uh, we like to show more than we can uh, talk, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're about that action, boss. <laughs> hey, real talk. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I am from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, born, love, I love some Louisiana, man. I love going back to the Crescent City at least once a year with my wife. Probably going to be heading back there during the season, hopefully to come catch a game. We always try to at least catch one home game that we can because we're in a, we're in Atlanta. So, you know, me walking around with the, you know, black and gold on, it's, it's like, this might as well be a target. <laughs> <laughs> but what would you say since you've, are, are you living in, in New Orleans, right? Are you there right now in New Orleans? Yeah. You are? yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sure you still call Philly home being from there, but like in the Crescent, what, what would you say is your favorite thing about New Orleans so far? Uh, honestly, my favorite Favorite thing and the thing I hate the most is the food, man. Like this, thing, this food is so good, so so good. Um, just that Cajun spice, that flavor. Um, I got a weird type of diet, so I stay away from a lot of the unhealthy things. But like, dude, it's 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 hard. It's hard to eat healthy out here, but you can eat good. I'll tell you that. Um, yeah, everything's fried. Everything got pounds of butter on it, but it tastes amazing. Pounds of spice is good. Yeah, man. I, it's, we went out there the last time and I tried uh, barbecued shrimp for the first time. And that was what I got every meal. Anywhere <laughs> I went, I got that every meal. is so good. I always find something new and always come back having to get new pants and new clothes. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but you played with the Chiefs, now my beloved Saints, and they both have extremely intense fan bases. Mm-hmm. That I mean, that's an understatement. Um is, would you consider one crazier than the other? And is there a time where a fan kind of went a little bit too crazy that you can remember? <laughs> uh, no, I haven't, I haven't experienced uh, too much craziness, but um, I would say, <laughs> hey, man, it, that's hard. That's a real hard one. Because uh, I'd say in KC, that's really all they got, you know, the Chiefs, man. Like, that's all, <laughs> that's, that's where a lot of energy is put. Um, mm. And there's a lot of good people out there, just wholesome, nice people. But I'd say the difference between there and here is uh, you feel that genuine kind of like brotherly, sisterly, family, Southern comfort, you know, um, is different. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a different type of love. And I definitely, definitely appreciate it. And I see it. You see it. You feel it in the stadium, man. You feel it when you walk outside the stadium. You feel it when you go to a restaurant. You feel it everywhere. Um, so that's the biggest difference. It's, it's really everywhere. Yeah. Love hearing that, man. My, my people back home, always welcome and always loving you. And what I love about the Saints, too, is that, like, even if you're wearing, like, something I realize about the Saints fans, fan base is that even if you're walking up with the opposing colors on, they try and recruit you, bring you with their food and their, their – Really? Hey, for real. For real. Yeah. Hey, good recruiting pitch, man. That food. Yeah, 
<laughs> so you're able to play with an NFL great, a Malcolm Jenkins. Did you get to before before he retired? Did you get to sit and wax with him a little bit, or, or get to learn anything from him before he took off? Uh, I mean, I think as a defense, we learned a lot as a whole. I didn't get uh, as much, you know, like one on one time for real. Uh, I was still trying to get my feet wet here, trying to uh, get my surroundings down, and then. Uh, we had a lot of just different things happen throughout the year. So um, I didn't really get that one on one, but he was a uh, he was a leader throughout the throughout the year. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So we're going to get into a couple things that are a little bit more fun and fan based, something that some things that the fans might not know about you. Um, so my first one, I was telling you that I sent you these questions before so you can kind of get ready for a couple of them. But one that I just kind of dropped on you. What player would you say is the hardest to tackle that you've encountered in the NFL? The hardest? I mean, uh, Derrick Henry's up there. Uh, and I don't know. You know, I've never actually gotten to tackle AK. You know, it's, it's something you just <laughs> it's not allowed in practice. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I feel like I have to put Derrick Henry up there and um, – you know who's actually pretty hard? Josh Allen. He is a tall, big guy, man. He doesn't go down easy um, like a lot of other quarterbacks you think. And, like, he has length, man. Like, he almost stiff-armed me. And I'm like, that doesn't happen, you know? <laughs> right. Right. No yeah. kidding. That's cool. That's that's interesting. Yeah, Josh Allen is, is man, I, I'm, I'm a big fantasy football guy, and I love me a mobile a mobile cornerback. And that yeah. is definitely something special. Um you have a love for art and design. Where, so where does that stem from? I mean, are you, are you an artist yourself? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm an artist. Um, it's definitely something that I've kind of put to the side over the years uh, just because during school, mm -hmm. I didn't really have a lot of time. Uh, I was in football in school. Um, I took a couple art classes in college, but it's something I've kind of always been good at and drawn towards. Uh, I think it comes from being an only child, just having a whole bunch of time to myself, a whole bunch of time in my head. So like everything in my head, I just try to get out on paper and it comes out in the form of art, man. Uh, and yeah, it was just a good way to relieve stress. And like, honestly, like I like, I'm, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. So when I do something, I like to make it real good. And I feel like when you're doing art, when you're drawing, it's like, really just getting those little details, particular things and being able to be patient and having the time for that. So um, I think that's why uh, I gravitate towards it and I'm pretty good at it. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely therapeutic. I'm a, I'm a big art guy myself. I love drawing cartoons and it's just, it's just something that's absolutely, yeah, it's a really good way to describe it. It's very therapeutic. Do you have anything you can show us there? I don't know if you... <laughs> uh -huh. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, I got, let me pull my wallet out real quick. <laughs> uh, when I was with the Chiefs, actually, so I started, um, making, like, Pokemon cards, man. Random. Really? <laughs> yeah, so, like, I don't know if you can, where's the camera at? Like, see some of these. I started kind of, like customizing Pokemon cards for some of the players. I had, I had some of my guys sign them, like some of my boys on the team. Yeah. Uh, one of our guys was a, or one of our custodians, he was a rapper. So I like turned his uh, little tape into a Pokemon card, just different stuff like that. Man. Real custom for people, but yeah, dude. Oh, I got to give Wiley his, one of our own linemen. This dude actually <laughs> collects Pokemon cards. Like during the Super Bowl weekend, this man bought, a whole table full of Pokemon cards and like just open them up. He has like reveals and stuff. He does all that type of stuff. But uh, yeah, man, I made a, a couple cool ones, a Miko card, a Tyreek one. And uh, it was a process, you know, it was a learning process of, as art is, you know. Um, and I kind of found my way of making them and uh, got to it, but then got distracted or not distracted, just busy, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I haven't been in doing that too much. That's so cool, man. I'm so yeah. Thank you for sharing that, dude. Those are dope. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. So, so you were saying, okay, so the, the Pokemon cards, you have a love for anime. Yeah. And I know like whenever I've talked to a buddy of mine I worked with, 
he's a huge anime fan and he talks to me about attack on titan and and all this stuff i've i'm from like i mean i'm i'm pushing 40 years old i remember ninja scroll that was ninja, like that was ninja my scroll. opening huh ninja scroll what's that you gotta what? teach me what ninja hey, you, gotta... you don't know the original ninja Sc oh buddy hey man, man. you, you yeah, got <laughs> you gotta check it out dude okay i'll put you on it's uh, it's old. It's it's. I remember sitting there watching it, and because I love cartooning, and stuff, I remember watching it and being so just enthralled with the detail and the art of it, and it just I fell in love with. It. I thought it was so awesome, and then I got away from anime a little bit, but then Pokemon popped up, and I told my buddy, about it. I was like, "Yeah, man, I like the old Pokemon," and he's like, "What, man? That's <laughs> come on, man. That's not real anime." I'm like, "I mean, I don't know what to tell." <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> so where does your love for anime stem from? Where does that come from? Just growing up and watching it? or Yeah, I think some of it comes from growing up and watching it. Um, and it kind of ties back into my drawings. Like my first drawings were like Dragon Ball Z drawings, dude. Yeah. Uh, that'll really teach you how to draw anime and really like people in general. Um, and then um, honestly, I, I, I haven't like, I, I started to dive deep back into anime probably in college. Um, throughout high school and middle school, it was just like, my mom was just like, yeah, you're not going to be sitting in front of the TV. So cable was out the window. Um, and like when I was in uh, middle school and uh, I think middle school is kind of when YouTube started to really pop off and you could kind of watch anime on that. Sure. Uh, so I'd watch a little bit on that, but like my boys from back home, they're like, They've been watching One Piece since I don't even know how long. And that has like 10,000 episodes already. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> but um, no, I'm definitely, it's, it's cool to see how like anime has evolved and just like how much detail and like um, how many serious, like very um, deep concepts they put, it, they intertwine in it. And like, you can watch it as a kid and kind of have all that stuff go over your head. But if you watch it as a, functioning adult you like realize there's a whole bunch of life lessons in there dude and this is, is a lot of cool stuff yeah it's pretty hard hitting whenever you're watching it as an adult it's crazy when you think back to like the cartoons that we used to watch man i how old are you 27 oh lord okay i don't know, <laughs> I don't know if you remember like nickelodeon with like rocco's modern life and all that oh yeah yeah <laughs> dude watch some of it now went over my head but you go back and watch it you're just like oh snap yeah dude what <laughs> it's really like does. man <laughs> do you have a favorite anime uh right <laughs> now it's probably jujutsu um it's uh something they got to continue now i think the last season's pretty much over but uh they just came out with a movie that was kind of a prequel to all the shows and uh, it's gonna, that movie's pretty much gonna make me buy Hulu or Crunchyroll, one of these things. I've been kind of watching it in other in other ways, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I heard the movie's awesome, so I gotta get tap in. That's how it started. My buddy at work told me about it, and he 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 was showing me everything, and I'm like, uh, he's like, if you watch it, and then you get to the movie, it'll it'll make it'll all make sense. It's <laughs> it's incredible. It's it's awesome, and the art was unbelievable. Now, something a little bit more grown up, a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more serious. Um, you're getting your MBA. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's yeah. huge. So wh how much longer do you have or do you, have you already finished? Uh, your I'm in my uh, I'm in my second term now. I started last year and um, our, our union, the NFLPA, actually has a really good system. Um, I think they have an actual partnership with Indiana University. That's where I'm getting my uh, MBA from um but they have a good uh kind of tuition reimbursement um system that i feel like a lot of guys don't use as much um especially while you're paying though uh or playing they'll, they'll pay for pretty cover much any tuition that you have towards uh, any type of education but um i studied finance and accounting in college so i wanted to go the mba route uh, i'll eventually want to own my own business or something uh own something so i know that knowledge will be useful that's what i was going to ask is there are, are is there anything that you're wanting to do with the nba after you're out of football i mean it's it's always good something i always love hearing players say you know talk about is what they plan on doing after 
they're out of the league. Yeah. Um, well, hey, if I can start an art business, um, some type of custom, I'm thinking some type of custom design, some type of type of custom art kind of business. Um, like I know you do shoes, man, and like yeah, put me on. <laughs> hey, dude. Hey, I've been I've been doing a little customization of shoes over the years, and like that, like that's the type of stuff I love, man. Um, I think it's awesome and just a cool way to kind of express yourself in different different ways. Uh, but yeah, hopefully I will own my own business, get get you along. Uh, <laughs> and we could uh, get some get some things shaken. Cool. This is all a verbal contract, so everybody watching this, y'all heard it. <laughs> Whenever you get them, are you looking to get into like a doctorate in business? Or are you just gonna? Because a lot of folks, like whenever they get the MBA, they just go right to work. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I just want the MBA. You know, um, a lot of things these days, you kind of need that um, kind of uh, postmark or stamp to say, like, you have the education to back up what you're saying. Sure, right, um, right, right. And I, yeah, I just think it's useful. I don't know if I'm gonna get a doctorate. Um, like, that was kind of the thing in my family. My mom has a PhD and my dad has a PhD. So like, I was supposed to get a PhD. Um, like throughout school, she hated football, man. She hated the fact that I played it. <laughs> but now she definitely, you know, turned a new leaf. Um, but uh, the running joke is I got a PhD in football. So there you go. <laughs> I'm good. I got my PhD. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say two words and I've got to know what this means. You, you told me about this whenever we were talking before. And I'm, I'm real curious. Uh, you already know what's coming. <laughs> Fake vegan. <laughs> yeah. Fill me in. <laughs> um, so oh, it's, a, it's a long, long story. Um, but I'll try and condense it. Um, I guess I, I would say from probably the end of high school throughout college, I was dealing with like this skin issue. Don't know what it was. It might've been eczema or like some other doctor said it was tinea versicolor, whatever. Um, I go to my fourth doctor and I see them on WebMD, just like looking up the symptoms. And I'm like, dude, I've done this myself. Like what is like, none, none of the medicines or like lotions, whatever was working. So I looked into it myself more and just looked more into the diet. And that was around when <clears throat> what came out um that documentary on netflix and it, it was my rookie year and um after watching what the hell like i was eating a cheesesteak and cheese fries and i'm like yeah it's gonna be my last one like i gotta try this because uh from what i saw it's like what you put in your body like your body will react in different ways and show you what's wrong like hey you shouldn't be eating this or hey like we like this a lot right um, so i uh i went completely vegan for a week and my skin issues went away like totally gone like that so like after that I was just like yeah I gotta do this but um I was a 290 pound D lineman and I was sitting at 275 which wasn't uh completely horrible because they had moved me to outside linebacker so like I could stay at that weight but um I just wasn't doing it right like I was eating fries I was eating chips Oreos and not really getting nutrition um, no meat, no like real protein. Um, so I added fish back in and my skin didn't react. I, uh, supplement with like vegan protein shakes and stuff like that. And, um, that's why I say I'm a fake vegan. Like, I, I definitely believe like there's a, like, I think we, we are advanced enough as people to like be killing animals and like using their meat as food. But, um, and I know that's not a vegan like concept or vegan idea. Uh, they're very, very, uh, let's say passionate about uh, saving all the animals and like no killing. Like you can't even eat honey, I guess, if you're a vegan, like a real right. vegan. Um, so yeah, so like, that's not my mindset behind it. It's more about like the health benefits and uh, what I'm getting out of it and what my body likes from it. So yeah, that's that's the whole fake vegan thing. I eat food, uh, fish, but I don't eat like any other animal products like dairy, um, red meat, chicken, uh, eggs, stuff like that. Man, 
Yeah. <laughs> That's all to you, man. I don't, I don't know if I can do it. I just don't know. <laughs> hey, I mean, and another thing, like another benefit from it, it's kind of kept me away from a lot of the bad foods I used to eat. Like I used to be able to get away with eating uh, pizza late at night, chicken fingers, like all the stuff you could name, like ice cream, this at 12 at midnight, you know, like stuff like that. And like I was working out and my body was burning it. But obviously that is not good for later on in life. <laughs> No, man. Once you hit the thirties, it's when it just starts going. Like it's, it's, uh, it's <laughs> yeah, man, you'll, you'll wear that for the rest of your life. Once on the list forever on the hips, bro. Like it's, <laughs> it's bad when you hit that age, dude. <laughs> so you are a gamer. Am I right in saying that? Or you just like video games? Uh, I'd say I used to be a gamer. I like, I definitely like video games a lot. And I just kind of got into uh, like VR gaming. Um, so I got an Oculus and that thing is like, I would never go back to playing a PlayStation or anything else too. <laughs> and, uh, like I got this game population one, it's pretty much Fortnite and VR and yeah, I was sold on that. <laughs> really? What's the what population one about? Um, so imagine Fortnite where, uh, you, you, you like fall out of the sky but you get to actually control it by like holding your arms up and gliding through the air which is cool and then the building so like you can't build ramps but you can build walls so that kind of stops the people who are like on their computer expert builders just building up and you can't you know kill them like in this vr game you could really you can only build walls around you and like below you and above you but you can't build a ramp to like climb up okay is it so, is it like a is it a like a for, what is it like a first person shooter or something is it, is it yeah like so it's a first person shooter too which is awesome so you actually have to like hold the hold the sights up and like actually aim at what you're shooting um I and then the one with the two handles right or the yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. two handles and then the craziest thing is that you can climb any surface in this game so you can yeah you put your gun away and just start grabbing onto anything and start climbing so you can climb trees hide out in trees you can climb walls rocks whatever it's cool. <laughs> hey, that's not like fun. Yeah, my wife and I, we, we're again, age is kind of showing. Like we're we're you know bubble bobble fans. And so <laughs> if you ever play bubble bobble and like Mario like and those old school games, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In my closet, I have. There's an old. Do you remember the old? Well, your age, man. Damn. Old, <laughs> what? Like <laughs> the old tilt uh, arcades and the malls and stuff back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a Simpsons game that was like a like you know like a standing arcade game where you could pick one of the Simpsons and play. I've got it sitting right over there in my closet, and I'm obsessed with it. And then then I got it, and now I never play it. <laughs> it was yeah. like biggest waste of money. But I we love having them around to where if we're bored one day or something, like it's incredible what games have done. We went and looked at an Oculus, and we were thinking about getting one because we saw. Man, uh, T Pain is a is a, a friend, and he he told us about the Oculus. That's probably the best one, and he's got the, there's like this horror game where you're going through a house. Yeah, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, I forgot what the name of it, but uh, I can't yeah. remember the name of it. But it looks it looks <laughs> pretty sick. But it's like I, you know, I love stuff like that, like scary games. And my wife loves like um what what are those uh resident evil and uh oh yeah, yeah. yeah House on, or, or what is it uh silent hill yeah <laughs> she loves those type of games so like she'll be up playing those lights off and stuff and i'm not even playing man the way that they got these games <laughs> now you're kind of like you hear something in the house <laughs> dude yeah dude that's the thing you got the oculus on and you like it was crazy just in the lobby of it like um the landscape and like it, it pretty much pushes puts you in a room like a living room and you get to see all, like you got all your options and stuff like that but like outside of your living room you kind of see this environment and like you can change it or whatever and like I get, think mine was like by a waterfall and the wind was blowing and I had like my fan on and like when I tell you I thought that wind was actually hitting me and like all those sounds it was crazy <laughs> It was crazy. I imagine that'd be awesome. I, have you broken anything playing it? No, nah, no, nah, not yet. So, like, <laughs> I started playing it because, uh, or I had a lot of time to play it because uh, I had injured my ankle. So I was out in a boot for a while, and I was just sitting around. I'm like, hey, I can do this on the little scooter thing I got. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It was awesome. 
<laughs> so we're, we're just about done, my man. And then you can get back to playing your Oculus or whatever you want to do, making them cards. Those, those, man, I cannot express how dope those cards were, man. You surprised me. I was, I was like, man, I'm gonna see if I can get them. If you got something, something that he did artistically, and you brought those out, and I was, that's cool. Yeah, do you, I uh, going back to football a little bit, the draft coming up. Mm-hmm. What, in in your opinion, and you can be political as you want. Do you think? <laughs> do, what do you think? y'all need as an organization what do you think y'all need to go after in the draft uh yeah that's that's like stuff i don't really pay that much attention to um hey i'd just say like our defense of the bo- defensive side of the ball man is solid like solid solid right. um and i know we got michael thomas coming back and just like our offensive weapons that we got you know like Maybe just adding a little bit there, maybe some depth on the O line, you know, like we lost uh, T Stead and uh, just uh, things like that. But yeah, I mean, you never know. Uh, when I got to the Saints, <laughs> it was funny. Uh, Cam's like, oh, we got another big DN. Like, we're all like my size, like six, seven, freaking 280. Yeah, that's like what our D line coach loves. And then we like drafted another one. And he's just like, dude, like how many people does he want me to take care of? Like I'm over here trying to, <laughs> like he, he just wants me to crop kid, crop kids out and send them out after a couple of years. Like, what is this? <laughs> uh, but yeah, you never know. Like we could get another DM and we could get, I don't, I don't know. Um, but I, I, I just know, like, I'm excited for next year. <laughs> I'm excited. Just the team we had, man, and what we did through all the adversity we had, COVID, the hurricane, um, all that, dude, and we still were able to be successful. But I have a lot, a lot of hope for us. That's what I love to hear, man. Me too. Yeah. I do too. I can't wait for this season. We'll end it on that note. That's a good note to end it on, man. Hey, <laughs> hey. Tano, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. You're, I think, you're the second saint I've had on my show. It's hard to get a hold of y'all, man. Y'all are always busy. Y'all always got something going on. We have tons of Raiders in Alabama people coming on. Let's <laughs> you, fan. But, <laughs> hey, I appreciate it. It's an honor, man. I appreciate you having me here and, like, just letting me, you know, voice out whatever, you know? Absolutely, man. The honor's mine. Love to have you back on soon. Um, go kill it this season, partner. I can't wait. I can't wait to watch you on the field. Hey, I appreciate it. Hey, I'm going to be looking out for those shoes, man. Oh, I got you. Don't worry. Yeah, whenever as soon as I close this, we, you and I are going to talk about it a little bit. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I, I love what you're doing, and I love uh, your show, man. I've seen the people that you got on, dude. It's, it's awesome. Uh, and just uh, the insight you get, which is cool. Man, I really appreciate that. I really do. It means a lot. It really does. Yeah, I've, I've been real blessed with a lot of the, the, the guests that I've had. And if I'm being honest, man, you're probably one of the one of the few that I've been really, really excited about. So it's uh, – it's it's been awesome getting to talk to you, buddy. Hey, you too.